In this video, I'll go through the steps of setting up WireGuard on a Synology NAS running DSM-7 that can be managed through a Docker container. I'll specifically be using the WG Easy Docker image provided by Weijuo because it has a user-friendly web interface that makes managing WireGuard simple and straightforward. Before getting into the setup of WireGuard and the Docker container that manages it, I'd like to go through the prerequisite steps of setting up DDNS and port forwarding, which I covered in the video listed here on screen and which I'll link to in the description below. Refer to that video if you'd like a more in-depth explanation of DDNS and port forwarding. The goal of DDNS is to set up a domain name that remains consistent even if the IP address assigned by your ISP changes. Within DSM, this can be set up from Control Panel, External Access, then DDNS. I'll be using Synology as the DDNS provider and enter in a host name I'd like to use. I'll test the connection and click OK to finalize everything. For port forwarding, I'll manually forward the port that will be needed to access WireGuard running on my Synology NAS through my router, and here is a screenshot of the port forwarding rule that I've set up. Basically, the router will forward port 51820 to the corresponding port on my Synology NAS to allow external access to WireGuard. Out of the box, a Synology NAS doesn't include the kernel module required to run WireGuard, so you'll need to install one. And the only way I found to do this is to install a WireGuard SPK file or Synology package file that is built using RunFalk's Synology WireGuard repository for your NASA's CPU architecture. I've covered how to build a WireGuard SPK file along with setting up WireGuard on Virtual DSM 7 in my video on configuring WireGuard to run on a Synology NAS, which I'll link to in the description below. However, building your own WireGuard SPK file can be tricky, so to simplify your setup process, I've shared a Google Drive link which provides SPK files specifically built for DSM-7 for various CPU architectures in the description below. What you'll need to do is figure out what SPK file you need to download for your Synology NAS, and you can do that by visiting Synology's webpage listed here on screen that displays the various Synology NAS models and their corresponding CPU and architecture. I'll also link to this web page in the description below as well. In my case, I'll be setting up my DS220 Plus, so if I search for that specific model from Synology's CPU listing page, I see that the package architecture for the CPU used in my DS220 Plus is Gemini Lake. Now I'll bring up the Google Drive link that I've shared and download the Gemini Lake SPK file for me to use. Next, I'll bring up DSM on my DS220 Plus, then go to Package Center. Here, I'll select Manual Install and browse for the WireGuard Gemini Lake SPK file that I just downloaded and upload the file to my NAS. I'll then click Next. Agree to this warning regarding installing packages from third-party developers. Uncheck the Run After Installation checkbox from the Confirm Settings window, then click Done. Now we see that WireGuard shows up as an installed package. To properly start up WireGuard, we'll need to do it from the command line. So I'll first enable SSH by going to Control Panel, Terminal and SNMP, enable the SSH service, and click Apply. I'll click OK on this warning message window, and now SSH should be all set. Now from a terminal window, I'll SSH into my DS220 Plus and issue this command to start up WireGuard. Back in DSM, if I click on the WireGuard package from the Package Center, we can confirm that WireGuard is currently running. Now we're ready to set up the WG Easy Docker container that we'll be using to manage WireGuard. Before creating the container, I'll bring up FileStation and create a folder under the Docker folder and name it WG Easy. 
this folder will be used within the container to provide a persistent mount point where configuration files will be stored. Next, I'll again bring up the terminal window connected to my Synology NAS and issue this command. The main entries that need to be changed are the wg underscore host environmental variable, which should be either your WAN IP address or dynamic DNS hostname, which is what I've used here, and the password environmental variable, which sets the password that will be used in the web interface that the container will provide to manage WireGuard. Also note the volume line that maps the WG Easy folder we created earlier to the Etsy WireGuard directory within the container. The other entries are just cut and paste settings that were provided from the WG Easy Docker Hub page, which I'll link to in the description below. The page includes options that you may want to look at and adjust if you would like to configure your setup further. But for the purposes of this video, the configuration listed here should be sufficient. I'll enter in my password to continue and set up the WG Easy Docker container. Now back in DSM, if I bring up the Docker application from the main menu and switch to the container listing, we can see that WG Easy is up and running. We can now start configuring devices to use WireGuard, and this can all be done from the web interface provided by the WG Easy Docker container. If I bring up the details for WG Easy, we'll see what port we need to connect to, which is TCP port 51821, as well as the password we'll need to use. In a separate browser tab, I'll enter in the local IP address for my Synology NAS, along with the port number for the WireGuard web interface. Once loaded, I'll enter in the password and sign in. Here, I'll click on New Client to set up my MacBook and click Create. My MacBook is what I'm currently using, so I'll click on the Download Configuration icon to download the configuration file to my local computer. Next, I'll bring up the WireGuard application, which I've already installed from the App Store, and click on the plus icon, then the option to import tunnels from file. I'll then select the file that I just downloaded and click on the Import button. I'll edit the tunnel configuration and give it a more descriptive name. Also note that WG Easy defaults to using Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1 DNS server and sets up the WireGuard client in full tunnel mode so all traffic goes through the WireGuard server. I'll save the changes and test the setup by connecting my MacBook to my iPhone's personal hotspot, then activate the WireGuard tunnel. Now I should be able to connect to the WireGuard web interface from my MacBook and confirm the connection is established to the WireGuard server running on my Synology NAS. Here we can see that the connection was just established and we can see that data is passing through the WireGuard connection as well. I'd also like to set up my iPhone as a WireGuard client, so here from the WireGuard web interface, I'll click on the New button. Next, I'll give the new client a name and click Create. For my iPhone, I'll use the QR code to set things up, so I'll click on the Show QR Code icon. Then from the WireGuard app from my iPhone, which I also installed from the App Store, I'll click on the plus sign to add a new tunnel and select Create from QR Code. Now I'll scan in the QR code from the WireGuard web interface, give the tunnel a name, and click Save. Now while my iPhone is connected to my cellular LTE provider, I'll toggle the WireGuard connection on and we can see from the WireGuard web interface that the connection from my iPhone has been established properly. Hopefully this video helped you set up and configure WireGuard using the WG Easy Docker container, and if it did, make sure to like this video. Also, you may be interested in checking out these other videos listed here on screen. Lastly, I'd be grateful if you would consider subscribing to this channel and support my work by checking out the support this channel section in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.